Dr. Tedros, can you hear me? He's talking. He's talking. Yeah. He's muted. You are, you are muted, Dr. Tedros. Can you hear me now? Ah, good. <laughs> Go ahead, please. I think there is a few minutes uh, lapse, I, I pause, pause time, I think. Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. In the summer, Africa is certified as wild polio-free. This marked one of the greatest public health achievements of all time. Driven by millions of health workers reaching every child repeatedly with an effective vaccine and a unique partnership between WHO, UNICEF, Rotary, CDC, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and Gavi, global polio eradication remains achievable. However, the COVID-19 pandemic hurt momentum as polio and immunization efforts were suspended. This left children, especially in high-risk areas, more vulnerable to killer diseases like polio, measles, and pneumonia. And now we are starting to see outbreaks of this disease. We need to turn the tide quickly and ensure no child is left behind. Today, WHO and UNICEF are jointly launching an emergency appeal to rapidly boost measles and polio vaccination. While the world watches intently as scientists work to ensure safe and effective vaccines are developed for COVID-19, it's important to ensure that all children receive the life-saving vaccines that are already available. We estimate that 655 million US dollars is needed to address dangerous immunization gaps in children in non-GAVI eligible countries. This is a global call to action for all donors to stay the course and not to turn their backs on the poorest and most marginalized children in their hour of need. While the COVID-19 pandemic continues to evolve, we must take all opportunities to learn and improve the response as we go. Many countries heard our call back in January when we rang our highest alarm by calling a public health emergency of international concern. They worked closely with us and followed the parameters set out in the strategic response plan that WHO outlined on the 4 February. They have conducted reviews, shared data and experience and honed their response to their national experience and unique situation on the ground. As the pandemic unfolds, as countries have reflected, they have used interaction reviews to make their responses stronger. This kind of self-analysis review is what the world called for during World Health Assembly back in May. An interaction review uses a whole of society, multi-sectoral approach, acknowledging the contributions of all relevant stakeholders involved in COVID-19 preparedness and response at the national and subnational levels. By reviewing and adapting the current preparedness and response strategies and identifying what's working well and what needs to be strengthened, the review gives countries the opportunity to change the trajectory of the pandemic. <laughs> Interaction reviews not only help countries improve their COVID-19 response, but also contribute towards their long-term health security. To date, 21 countries have completed them 
and others are in pipeline. Today, we are happy to welcome the ministers of health from Indonesia, the Kingdom of Thailand and South Africa to share their experience and lessons from COVID-19. I would like to first introduce His Excellency, the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Health of the Kingdom of Thailand, Minister, Deputy Prime Minister Anutin Sharnidi Rakul. The floor is yours, uh, Your Excellency. Dr. Ted Loss, Director General of the World Health Organization. based on consensus. They highlighted the factors that helped Thailand successfully control the spread of COVID-19 so far. That include decisive leadership based on the base scientific evidence available, our strong public health system, and the strong whole of society approach across sectors. Cooperation and collaboration with all concerned sectors among the public and private sectors, civil society, and many institutions played important roles in breaking the chains of transmission. My highest appreciation is going to everyone in Thailand for their collective effort in curtailing the outbreak in our country. Besides our strengths, the review identifies that challenges for further improvement. First is to integrate information around COVID-19 and maximize its benefit. Second is to expand our surveillance systems by improving capacity to detect cases and increasing more efficiency of our emergency operation centers. Third is to advance the integrated digital data system for managing the situation and ensuring health security for everyone on Thai soil. Distinguished colleagues, IAR report reminds us the strengths that we need to maintain. At the same time, it advises us that the challenges we need is to address. We commit to improving our response to COVID-19 by working closely with relevant stakeholders. In this regard, I would like to thank all of our partners who have worked with us on the report, including WHO, various UN agencies, US CDC, and national colleagues in the academic sector. My special thanks is going to my colleagues at the Ministry of Public Health and all health workers who provide services across Thailand. Finally, I appreciate the role of the media in, dis in disseminating and advocating news and information that helps us communicate with the public more effectively to prevent the spread of the disease. Only together can we win the COVID-19 pandemic, and we shall win. Thank you very much. So thank you, thank you so much, Deputy Prime Minister, for those insightful remarks and lessons regarding Thailand's response. I would now like to welcome His Excellency, Minister of Health, South Africa, Dr. Zuelini Mikize, Your Excellency, the floor is yours. 
Thank you very much, Director General, uh, my brother, Dr. Tedros, Honorable Ministers, uh, representatives from various countries in the Departments of Health, and members of the media and the public. I'd like someone to help me share the slides uh, from your side, if that is possible. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to just take a quick walk through our journey on the COVID-19, and therefore I'd like to go to the next slide. This, the uh, presentation is just going to give us a quick overview, and then why are we going to intra-action review? What lessons have we learned and way forward? Next slide, please. This gives us a sense of the journey of the South African COVID, the fight against COVID. All the red lines there indicate how we've moved on the heavy lockdown and went downwards <clears throat> in a, a risk-adjusted way until we got to level three. And then, of course, uh, you'll see that that's when the surge started early in June and then up to July when we had 13,000 13, uh, test positive tests per day. And then it started declining. <clears throat> and thereafter, when it was going to plateau, went to the next level of the lockdown. We've continued on a plateau now. And at this point, we've even started opening up international travel. Next slide. <clears throat> at this point, we've got uh, 1,500 to 2,000 daily new positive cases, 732,000 cumulative cases, 91% uh, recovery and 2.7% um, uh, fatality rate and 41,000 active cases. Thank you. Next slide. <clears throat> this is the toolkit. I think all of us have used this from governance to case management, to tracing, to tracking, to information, to human resources, and all the issues that we've had to employ. Next slide. Through this uh, uh, interaction review and uh, on our own evaluation going back, we've learned a lot of lessons. Firstly, that the issues of national coordination, leadership, and governance uh, with various structures become important. Evidence-based response is important to ensure that science leads everything. The, the strengthening of emergency procurement processes, <clears throat> excuse me, to mitigate against corruption. Strong primary health care is important. Issues of fatigue must be given attention to. Close collaboration with labor and other social partners. Public-private partnership is important. Harnessing of power of technology, digital contact tracing, is also important and information dissemination and the issues of continued vigilance and aggressive response to cluster outbreaks, continued assessment of capacity of projected multi-sectoral and multifactorial impact. It's important to know that we need everybody to be touched by our response on this matter. The economic, economic impact is, is a major issue. The country and the citizens are bearing for, and we believe uh, the support of WHO has been very helpful to make us to be ready psychologically to face whatever comes as the next resurgence possibly comes up. Next slide. And here, learning from other countries that are experiencing COVID resurgence, uh, measures have been taken to prepare for, detect, to promptly respond to the resurgence. There is a national plan now for action to mitigate COVID-19 resurgence, which has been developed. Provinces are currently developing their resurgence mitigation plans. They didn't incorporate early warning systems, as I was saying, broken down right to the district level. And all the provinces now are remaining on high alert. And so every day as we watch, we look at where the clusters are breaking up. We've seen in the western part of the country, eastern, eastern part of the country. And all of these are indicating our state of alertness. And this is now based on the plan from the WHO research, resurgence plan. Next slide. Yeah, we've just got an indi a quick indicator. <clears throat> Everyone has to look out for anything that's less, less than 10% increase or decrease is under control. Between 10 and 20, it puts us on alert. Now we're looking out for more over 20% increase. That's indicating resurgence. And this, uh, these are some of the key uh, lessons that we have got from our uh, um, uh, intra-action uh, uh, review and the plans that we have developed together with the WHO as our partners. Next slide. So basically our recommendation is that intra-action reviews 
are valuable exercises that enable countries to recalibrate their responses. And in this case, in South Africa, it has really benefited us greatly. And the inter-action uh, uh, inter uh, reviews provide great inputs for adjusting the system and plans for readiness for a potential resurgence. And the issue of continuous engagement with communities and all the partners at local and international level uh, ensures that we are able to you know, uh, strengthen our uh, non-pharmaceutical interventions, such as social distancing, wearing of masks, hand and respiratory hygiene. You need the community to respond at that level. And lastly, we we still uh, the COVID-19 is still within us, and therefore need to remain vigilant to continue to fight together. We are quite quite clear that it needs an all community, all government, and everybody's uh, participation to fight. And the strength of the intra. Uh, action uh, uh, reviews is to actually revive that understanding amongst all of us so that as we move on, we are actually better prepared to respond. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to share the ideas. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Minister Mikhezi. Thank you so much for sharing South Africa's determined efforts to tackle COVID-19. I would now like to turn to the Minister of Health of Indonesia, Dr. Terawan Agus Putranato. Minister Putranato, the floor is yours. Dr. Tedros, Director General of the World Health Organization, my fellow colleagues, Minister of Health from Thailand and South Africa, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, afternoon, and evening. It is a pleasure to be invited and participate in today's event. The Ministry of Health of the Republic of Indonesia supported by WHO Indonesia Country Office, has conducted a national interaction review for COVID-19 response on 11 till 14 August 2020. The IER is an immediate follow-up of the fourth IHR COVID-19 Emergency Committee meeting recommendation that was held in July 2020. Surely it is not an easy task to bring representative of 138 multi-sectoral stakeholders to conduct a review of the existing COVID-19 response activities in Indonesia. However, under the leadership of President Joko Widodo, and the coordination of the COVID-19 Task Force Chief, General Luhut Binsar Panjaitan, representative from the technical unit within the Ministry of Health, other related ministries and government agencies, the national and regional COVID-19 Task Force, military and police forces, provincial and district government, hospital and primary health service facilities, laboratories, universities, professional associations, state-owned enterprises, and international organizations have been committed and been actively involved and contribute to the whole process of the IER. The involvement of the multi-sectoral stakeholder on the review is imperative in gaining a multi-perspective view of the COVID-19 response in Indonesia. This is particularly important because the IER in Indonesia covers the nine key pillars of the COVID-19 response, which consists of the pillar of one, command and coordination, second, risk communication and community empowerment, three, surveillance, rapid response team and case investigation. Fourth point of entry, international travel and transport. 
Five laboratory. Six infection control. Seven case management. Eight operational and logistic support. And nine maintaining essential health services and system. Indeed, active participation of such multi stakeholder is a key for a success IER. Equally important, the multi-sectoral involvement in the IER has also increased the acceptability of the IER recommendation by all stakeholders. As a result, the IER recommendation have been used in the revised COVID-19 health sector operational plan at the national and subnational level, as well as in updating the COVID-19 partner platform. IER recommendation contribute to the improvement of the multi-sectoral stakeholder command and coordination at the national and subnational level. It also strengthened the periodic monitoring of response plan indicator, including surveillance and laboratory coordination, as well as improved contact tracing, testing, and triage at health facilities to avoid exposure of patients and the health workforce to COVID-19. Enforcing the implementation and monitoring of large-scale social restriction and empowering the community as agent for change through COVID-19 key messaging and engagement were also considered as one of the area for improvement. Furthermore, the IER suggested improving telemedicine to prevent COVID-19 exposure and maintain essential health services such as immunization, tuberculosis, HIV, and non-communicable diseases program as part of ensuring the continuity of essential health services. Indonesia, which also include the IER research, as a reference for the AHR State Party Annual Reporting in the 74 WHE. Ladies and gentlemen, Indonesia is of the few that reviewing the operation plan of COVID-19 response through the multi-sector stakeholder interaction review is one of the best practice to collectively identify best practice, gaps, and contributing factor for correction action in the COVID-19 response effort. From our point of view, the result of the IER review has provided input for Indonesia to improve multi-sectoral preparedness coordination in line with the multi-sectoral preparedness coordination framework that was published by WHO in May 2020 to strengthen coordination for a better health emergency preparedness. Thank you. Terima kasih banyak. Thank you. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Terima kasih. <laughs> Uh, hi, we are trying to connect uh, with Dr. Tedros, so um, uh, I hope it will be solved very shortly and quickly. Dr. Tedros, we lost you, but we are trying to fix the problem. Yeah. Um, so we um, 
We are trying to uh, connect again with Dr. Uh, Tedros, but uh, once we are trying to fix this, I would like to remind journalists uh, to raise their hands if they want to ask a question to get in the queue. And I would like also to, make, uh, to ask them to uh, unmute. Uh, Dr. Tedros is back, I was told. Dr. Tedros, are you with us? Dr. Tedros? Dr. Tedros, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, very well, DG. Go ahead, please. After, uh, I think, the interruption, it needs 30 seconds to unmute. <laughs> That's the uh, configuration. So I was uh, hearing your voice, but not mine. OK, so I was saying terima uh, kasih to His Excellency Minister Putranato uh, for sharing Indonesia's efforts uh, to suppress COVID-19. Uh, Your Excellency, terima kasih again. By conducting reviews in real time and sharing lessons to the world, the three countries have reflected a blueprint for how countries can suppress COVID-19 and break the chains of transmission. You can do exercises, you can do simulations, but the best time to look at your emergency response capacity is when an emergency is happening. That's when you can clearly see what works, what doesn't, and what you need to improve. There is hope, and now is the time to double down on efforts to tackle this virus. Wherever a country is in terms of the outbreak, countries can turn it around by driving a whole of government and whole of society response. It's never too late. While we invest and test vaccines to prove they're safe and effective, I encourage all countries to learn from Thailand, South Africa, and Indonesia and work to suppress this virus today with the tools in hand that we know work. We can save lives and livelihoods and end this pandemic together. I thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tedros and our uh, distinguished you, guests. Um, I will now open the floor to questions from members of the media. I remind you that you need to raise your hand by using the hand function, the raise your hand function in order to get in the queue. And please make sure you are unmuted. And please uh, reminding journalists to ask only one question. Uh, we will start uh, the session, question and answer session, with uh, Stephen Howard from Travel News Asia. Stephen, can you hear me? Stephen? Stephen, can you hear me? Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, hello. Uh, <laughs> you can ask your question. Please go ahead. Hello, and thank you for taking my question, and thank you for all the work that the WHO does. My question is for Kun Anutin. Uh, Thailand is currently looking at reducing the quarantine from 14 days to 10 days. I would like to ask, please, what is the research behind this? When do you expect that to happen? And what are your thoughts on such a reduction, please? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Howard. Um, Mr. Um, Sharvira Kul, do you want to answer this question? Minister of Thailand. No. Um, I think. 
We are uh, trying to um, contact again the Honorable Minister of Thailand. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Dr. Wenberg Kerkhoff can uh, try to answer this question. Go ahead. So thanks. While we try to get while we try to get them back, um, there is uh, there have been some questions about the quarantine period now. This is the time in which um, a contact of a confirmed case needs to be separated from other individuals. We call that quarantine. And WHO's recommendation on this is based on what we know of the incubation period, which is the time from exposure to the time that someone develops symptoms. Um, our guidance for incubation period is, is 14 days, and that's based on the amount of time that most individuals, 95% of individuals, will develop symptoms um, after exposure. Um, and so uh, what we've outlined is this 14-day period, and there are some countries that are discussing the possibility of reducing that time period based on a number of factors um, associated with their response and the capacity to provide supported quarantine. Um, what we understand from a number of countries is that if they do reduce that 14-day period, they're considering adding testing as part of that. Um, but there is a balanced uh, approach that if there is a reduction in that 14-day period, there are some risks that are associated with that in terms of missing uh, the potential cases onward. So um, what we have is, is our outline based on the science and based on uh, what is understood to be that incubation period. That's where that 14-day comes from. Uh, thank you. Uh, the next question is for Kate Killand. Kate, can you hear me? Kate? Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Very well. Go ahead, please. Hi, thank you for taking my question. I'm interested in uh, what's happening with um, mink farms um, in various parts of the world. Um, we've had a major cull in Denmark announced this week.